Hi, this is Shadi and today we are discussing a man that is very well known in the Aikido world but very seldom mentioned in the Judo world because first of all not many knows that he is a judoka and also uh, his contribution was far greater in Aikido than in Judo. That man is Kenji Tomiki. Kenji Tomiki, I'm sure a lot of you know this, that he has uh, a competition style of Aikido, a sparring style. It's called Shodokan Aikido or Sports Aikido. Now it is heavily discouraged among Aikikai Aikidokas, which uh, I don't agree with. I personally feel that uh, his style should be pushed, encouraged and developed because that's the only way you can keep Aikido for what it is and also keep it uh, a martial art, not just solely an art. This is coming from someone who has trained with the best and also got his black belt in Aikido. So Kenji Tomiki was born on March 15th, 1900, just at the turn of the century. Uh, like I mentioned, he was a judoka both and Aikidoka. However, uh, he started Aikido at the age of 26 and at the age of 28, he became a fifth dan in Judo. So he was training way into his childhood, way earlier than he started Aikido. Like I said, a judoka at heart. And he was even training under Jigoro Kano himself, the founder of Kodokan Judo or Kano Ryu, Kano Jiu Jitsu, whatever it was called at that time. Um, and at the age of 26 that he started training Aikido. He even uh, represented the Miyagi Prefecture in the first ever Judo tournament that was held in front of the Emperor, which is now called uh, the All Japan. It's still disputed till this day. It's uh, arguably the biggest competition you can uh, go and compete in in Japan as a Japanese. It's kind of like he's saying uh, Championnat de France or the uh, uh, French Championship, which uh, if you dispute it, you're automatically in the uh, Grand Prix, Grand Slam, and even the Olympics. So this is how high up this uh, tournament is, and he uh, represented the Miyagi Prefecture, so he was a very high-level judoka, not just in Aikido. So uh, in from 1936 till 1945, to, till the end of the war, he stayed in Manchuria, where he served, uh, and he taught Aikido there. Back then, it was called Aiki Budo um, and also uh, helped in the Canton Army and the Imperial Household Agency and in 1938 he became an assistant professor in the Kenkoku University in Manchuria um, and by 1940 just 14 years of training Aikido he was already in 8th Dan and he got his 8th Dan in Judo in 1978 so a year before his passing he achieved the rank of 8th Dan in Judo, but in Aikido he was his progression was far greater and far faster. And keep in mind, he trained under Morihayu Ueshiba and uh, Judo he trained under uh, Jigoro Kano. So the, both of them are founders of the arts that he trained in. So just imagine the wealth of knowledge that Kenji Tomiki possessed, which is truly astonishing and in my opinion very underrated as a martial artist and also as an innovator and what he tried to do with his theories when it comes to judo and aikido so uh, after returning from a three-year internment in the uh, soviet union he taught judo and aikido in waseda university and uh, this is where he started to experiment with his uh, theories containing the kata uh, in Judo and also uh, sparring in Aikido and this experimentation and this is where he started to really uh, develop his theories that it put him at a, a bad position with the founder of Aikido Morihai Ueshiba and the Aikikai in general so the Aikikai uh, demanded from Kenji Tomiki that uh, if he were to you know progress his style and progress his way of training and make it uh, a thing it would have to adopt a different name other than Aikido because uh, he intended to introduce a system of competition because through Judo of course he believed that uh, competition is good for raising character and also developing your overall technique body conditioning etc and 
competition is very important well there's a the thing we say uh, oh you need to experience uh, resistance we say this but this means a lot what do I mean by that because because of resistance this is where strategies are born this is where tactics are born this is where feints and uh, tricking someone uh, are born in order to get to the technique because uh, a technique can be mastered through kata I believe that so but in order to apply it against a resisting opponent this is where you need strategy so between you and the technique fully accomplished there is a middleman and that is the strategy I'm sure you know this but this is what people that only practice kata and non-combative arts uh, need to hear this because there is a difference between learning a technique and applying it against someone in combat I can do uchimata all day uh, in uchikomi and nagekomi but uh, I can poorly execute it in uh, randori simply because I lack the strategy and I lack the mental toughness of competition and this is where this is why sparring is important it's not because you know I'm too peaceful or uh, I'm too deadly for MMA it's because to develop strategies uh, it's not just you and the technique there's the middleman and that the middleman is the strategy because no one is gonna let you do the technique just watch you do it I'm sorry that's just the way it is so like I said uh, they urged him to name his style different than quote-unquote Aikido uh, he was convinced of the need to modernize Aikido he stood his ground and he was very uh, unrelenting when it comes to the effort to make it uh, a form of competition and that is why I salute a man like Kenji Tomiki so in 1953 uh, Tomiki and other martial artists nine uh, other martial artists were selected to tour the US Air Force bases in the United States um, and this is where he became the first Aikido instructor to ever visit the United States um, also this is where a lot of people lack the knowledge of uh, in judo he even had his contribution for example uh, back when I was doing Aikido and I wanted to uh, train in judo and I was looking up judo I found the Kodokan Goshin Jutsu Kata uh, which was developed in the 50s uh, you see Mifune do it all the time I showed it many times uh, he had his part in creating and developing this Kata because back when I was looking at the kata and I saw the kotegaichi, I saw the nikyo, I saw the uh, waki gatame, uh, the elbow lock, uh, the ikyo, or, um, I saw it and the kote osai I think it's called so I said like this is just aikido like these aikido moves are in judo as well so I figured that uh, how inclusive and uh, has so many aspects judo has to it that I ended up going back to it and also as a child I trained and I had to go back to judo so the fact that a uh, Goshin Jutsu has so many uh, Aikido techniques so it's, it's thanks to Tomiki which was a part in creating this kata uh, in the 1950s way after the passing of uh, Kano Sensei so his work uh, judo was published in 1956 the kata as well like I said it is considered you know one of the staples of judo today in, in for example in France in order to become a third dan you need to pass Goshin Jutsu no kata so this is how far and advanced in judo it's considered and it has Aikido basis so Aikido like I said lacks strategy and competition but the techniques are there and they work and they hurt and they can injure so uh, so in 1967 he opened his uh, Shodokan Dojo hence the name Shodokan Aikido uh, and he used it as a like a way to experiment his theories uh, on Aikido and competition of Aikido uh, Tomiki followed the Ueshiba blueprint when it comes to Aikido uh, and he also became uh, head a division head of the uh, International Martial Arts Federation so in 1970 he retired from Waseda University like I mentioned where he taught both Judo and Aikido and uh, in the same year uh, he presided over the first all Japan student Aikido tournament and the basic rules of the holding Aikido 
tournaments uh, was sought out and developed by this time and uh, it became uh, a viable form of Aikido competition. So in 1974 he founded the Japan Aikido Association or the JAA um, to promote his way of thinking and theories. Uh, Tomiki also set up a dojo in Osaka in 1976 so up until the uh, late his life and his final years he was still working in promoting the style of Aikido um, with the support of the Masaharu, uh, of, uh, Masaharu Uchiyama the vice chairman of the uh, Japan Aikido Association uh, so this dojo uh, was meant to function as the headquarter for the JAA and Tomiki served as the director uh, the current uh, headmaster now there at the JAA or the uh, Shodokan Aikido Federation is uh, Tetsuro Nariyama so it's still there it's still viable uh, in Japan it's still there's not only just Aikikai uh, and finally he passed away uh, in 1979 he left his closest disciple uh, Hideo Oba as the head of the AJJ and continued to live on through so uh, that man contributed for both Judo and Aikido. I understand Aikido, he uh, contributed far more. Uh, he, he passed away both 8th Dan in both arts, which is amazing. And there's another thing that uh, he became 8th Dan in 1940. Uh, but after that, he started to experiment in his uh, theories when it comes to Aikido. And he wasn't awarded any more Dan's, which is... Uh, unfortunate and also uh, shows a spite and bitterness uh, from the Aikikai towards him which is uh, really contradicting to their claims of uh, being you know uh, inclusive you know uh, experimenting with ideas being open and flowing and in harmony of other things uh, the fact that he pushed competition it's not to push ego and to push you know uh, the sense of superiority uh, you know I'm sure anyone who spars anyone who does competition you would know how humbling competition can be uh, especially after a loss and how you know happy you become and you realize how much better you became after you you win and develop the right strategy against the person who beats you uh, competition uh, there is a uh, it comes from a, a uh, Greek term the competition I don't know what it was for the Greeks there you can please let me know down below I'm just thinking this off of my mind uh, compete is to grow together if I'm not uh, mistaken so no it doesn't uh, breed ego etc I understand that Ueshiba uh, fought his whole life he went to war etc he wanted something non-competitive for his uh, peace of mind etc but uh, for those that don't train and didn't go to war, they need something like, in my opinion, Shodokan Aikido or Tomiki Aikido. Because, uh, in my opinion, this is what will develop not only their self-defense skills, which Aikido uh, lacks a lot, but also uh, it will develop uh, a sense of humbleness and also a way of strategizing your training and also your life. And this is coming from not only a judoka but also a man who had who was uh, who trained years under Christian Tissier so I know what I'm talking about but if you have anything to add about Kenji Tomiki the state of Aikikai um, anything in general about this topic you can always share it down below uh, I believe that Tomiki Aikido has a lot to offer when it comes to competition specifically uh, the aspect where you compete against someone who has a knife and they're trying to charge at you uh, and you have to defend yourself for me this is very important specifically for self-defense i am someone that's very involved and invested in self-defense so i believe that tomiki aikido shodokan aikido has something to offer um maybe they can blend with uh, judo federations and create another style of competition like I, judo has you know, neiwaza tachiwaza or the ijf style competition also kata competitions maybe they can uh, 
add something against a weapon which was also uh, push judo to become far more self-defense oriented which is also the foundation of this art itself so again if you have anything else to add please the comment section